Welcome to Division Three Baseball here on JumboCast as we bring you coverage of this non-conference matchup between the visiting Johnson & Wales Wildcats and the hosting Tufts University Jumbos. My name is Justin Parada and I'm joined here by Bob Jakes. Thank you for joining us, Bob, today. Yeah, it's a pleasure. How are we doing, Justin? Doing well. Uh, special day here at Salt Goodwin Park as today is the first night game here at the brand new stadium, so looking yeah, forward to that. Not too dark out yet, but these lights are gonna be coming on, I'd say probably around the third or fourth inning, so everybody's pretty amped up about that. Of course, very exciting about that. Of course, the Tufts Jumbos are coming off of a great sweep this weekend over Bowdoin, as they improved to 17-6 and six on the year and 6-0 in conference play. The Johnson & Wales Wildcats, of course, coming in at a nice 17-11 and 11 record, 9-3 in conference. And a pretty familiar matchup here, as we've seen these play teams play each other over the years. And a couple familiar faces out in the Johnson & Wales dugout, of course, Coach John Casey making his return. Coached here for almost four decades, and of course a Hall of Famer. So, very familiar matchup, and looking forward to this one. Yeah, it's definitely really nice to see Coach Case back. Um, you know, should be a pretty uh, friendly game, but sources inside the Tufts dugout telling me that uh, Coach Sfagas has been treating this game like the World Series, so, <laughs> you know, it's definitely has the potential to be a bloodbath here. Definitely a fun one here on a Tuesday, and of course, on the mound for the Tufts Jumbos, we have Justin Wells, the junior southpaw. Exciting to see what he could bring today. And the lineup for your Johnson and Wales Wildcats, so batting first, Playing center field, Trevor Juan. Batting second, playing second base, Jack O'Bert. Batting third, playing first base, Miles Kelly. Batting fourth, playing right field, EJ Leone. In the five hole, playing shortstop, Riley Hassan. Batting sixth, playing third base, Xavier Botello. Batting seventh, playing catcher, Owen Davis. Batting eighth, at the DH spot, Griffin Schneider. And in the nine hole, Playing left field, Thorin Sanchez Guerra. And on the mound today for Johnson and Wales will be Justin Markell. And now your home jumbos. So batting first, playing center field, we'll have Henry Fleckner. Batting second at second base, we'll have Jesse McCullough. Batting third, the right fielder, senior Jimmy Evans. Batting fourth, team captain, first baseman, Connor Flavin. Batting fifth, the DH, Clay Soule. Batting sixth, the left fielder, Ben Leonard. In the seven hole, catching, Connor Brawla. Batting eighth, at third base, Patrick Solomon. And in the nine hole, playing shortstop, Ozzie Fleischer. And of course, on the mound, we have Justin Wells. So Bob, anything you're looking for in particular from Wells here? Um, I think Wells has got to stay true to who he is as a pitcher. You know, he's one of those mid-relief kind of closer guys. I'm expecting him to go, you know, two to three innings today most likely. You know, these midweek kind of out-of-conference games, they're typically a staff day. You know, we're going to see a lot of arms today most likely. Uh, but Wells usually with a fastball from the left side, 82 to 85. Uh, nice uh, sharp change, sharp slider. So, you know, I'm not expecting a lot of fastballs from Wells today, but First pitch, strike on the outside corner. 0-1 now to the center fielder, Trevor Juan. Yeah, we do got a pretty good breeze going out to left field here today. Swung on and fouled off to the backstop. A quick 0-2 count to the leadoff batter. Juan hitting a respectable 283 on the year. Yeah, he's down. Down pretty quick here in the count. Well, it's definitely in the driver's seat. Here's the 0-2 delivery. Breaking ball down for a ball. One and two. Yeah, that change up, that's his go-to pitch. You're going to see a lot of those today, especially especially in those pitching counts. Just going to try to get you to swing right over the top. Definitely one of Wells' strong suits. As he looks into the catcher, Brawler. Here's the 1-2. Swung on. Pop fly, Fleischer going back, and there's the first out. Yeah, great job by Fleischer there, just taking charge. You know, he's kind of the captain of that infield, just anything you can get. Yeah, the shortstop, almost like the, the quarterback <laughs> of the infield for this jumbo team. Of course, been very respectable defensively thus far this season. 
with a 969 fielding percentage. And here's the pitch. Ball low, 1 0 is the count. And now batting second is Jack Obert, the second baseman. Wells looks in. Here's the 1 0. Swung on, hit sharply up the middle. Fleischer diving. Here's the throw. And it is safe. An infield single for the two hitter. A nice stop there from Fleischer to keep it on the infield, but that yeah, is. Yeah, that was a really nice diving stop by Fleischer there, but you know, just good hustle right out of the box, you know, beat that throw. And now here's the three hitter, Miles Kelly, the big lefty first baseman. Having a very good year so far. I'm interested to see what Johnson and Wales' uh, base running approach is going to be today. Definitely. With, uh, Connor Bowman not catching. Here's a pitch. Hit right out Fleischer, and it's caught. Almost a little gem shot there for the second out. And now hitting fourth is EJ Leone, the right fielder. Off to a very good start this year. Batting 575 and 40 at bats. Yeah, I mean, that's just unbelievable. You know, he's just the guy who's, who's who's doing stuff in this lineup. Pretty remarkable, as Wells looks in. And a little pick off to first base, just to keep the runner honest. Nice quick two outs for Wells here. Facing a very good batter here in Leone. We'll see how this battle goes. Wells delivers. Hangs a change up outside for a ball. Yeah, you can see Wells kind of quickened his his uh, timing to the plate there. More of a slide step. You know, although Johnson and Wales isn't much of a stealing team, they have 30 steals on the year. But I wouldn't be surprised if they. And this one is a ball inside. Try to test this this battery here of Wells and Brala. Quickly behind here in the count for Wells. Hopefully looking to get a strike in here as he gets set. Here's the pitch. Swung on, hit sharply to left. Leonard dives, it's past Leonard. Runner rounding third, heading for home. And they will score. Yeah, I mean, that's just exactly what you gotta do there when you're up in the count. So EJ Leone with a RBI double continues his hot start to this season. And Johnson and Wales is out to a quick one nothing lead over the Jumbos. That ball was absolutely smoked off the bat. And, you know, with that wind going out to left too, Justin, I mean, that just got extra, a little bit extra on it, you know, just just out of reach for Leonard. Definitely something to keep in mind today. Always a little bit windy here at Salt Goodwin Park. So we'll see if that affects things here. Wells looking in. Here's a strike on the high outside corner. You know, it's always good as a pitcher. You know, you just gave up a big bomb like that just – you know, take a deep breath, resettle yourself on the mound, come back and throw a strike. It's definitely, that's pretty important as a pitcher. You got to bounce back. So, see if you can do it here. Here's the second pitch to get bat. Just miss on the outside corner. The count is even, one on one. Also in the box is the five hitter Riley Hassan, the shortstop. Runner out in second here, possible RBI opportunity. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. And the five hitters down, one, two. Yeah, I expect Hassan here to just choke up on the bat, step on the box, try to protect the plate here. Yeah, just, just try to get something going here with two outs. Hopefully try to get that run in or just get on base. Wells. Fires and delivers. This one's grounded out to the second baseman. McCullough throws and there's a third out of the inning. So Johnson Wales comes out to a quick one nothing lead with two hits and one run left on base. We'll be back to you shortly.
Welcome back as we return to play here at Saul Gittleman Park as the Jumbos get a crack at it as Johnson Wells out to a quick 1-0 lead here and in steps in the leadoff hitter Henry Fleckner playing center field. Of course if you do not catch the game this weekend Fleckner his first home run. Pretty exciting stuff there. Yeah he just had a great weekend. Here's the pitch and that one's fired in for a strike. Oh one's one's the count. Fleckner hitting a respectable 286 on the year. And something to watch out for, 15 stolen bags. Here's the pitch. This one's hit sharply, base hit. Base hit to the right of the shortstop. Fleckner is on base. Yeah, this is a great job getting a hold of your pitch right there. And you're absolutely right with the stolen bases. I wouldn't be surprised if Fleckner takes off in this at bat. You know, that's just been the motto of this Tusk Jumbos team all year. Stolen bases, stolen bases, stolen bases. It's a really aggressive team on the base path. Right you are, Bob. They've, They've already set the record, which was 72, set back in 2006. They already have 82 stolen wow. bases in this season. Talk about that. The South Paul delivers, and he throws it. Trying to keep Fleckner honest over there. Obviously knows the threat he poses on the base paths. McCullough hitting now. The freshman second baseman. Fires. Ball low. Oh, it's it's away from the catcher, and it's a stolen base for Fleckner. Scratch that. Pass ball. But a good read for Fleckner nonetheless. Cull looks in for the sign. And the pitcher, looking into the catcher, gets set. Here's a delivery. Swing and a miss. Counts even at one and one. McCullough coming into this one, hitting 263. 19 at bats. In the two hole for this Jumbo's ball club. Here's the pitch. Ball low. 2 1. Bob, you thinking about a possible bunt situation here? What are you what are you thinking early in the game? Um you know, I'd say, you know, you got your heart of your lineup and runners in scoring position. I'd say just let these guys kind of swing the bat, yep. you know, take it, take a loose approach to pitch high and away. Take a, take a loose approach, you know, let Markel settle in, you know, so far he's, it seems like he's having a little bit of trouble with the command. Um, you know, I let these, you know, I let these hitters get into a hidden count, try to find a pitch that they really liked and just drive it. Where you are and the three, one hitters count here for McCullough high ball four. Now the Jumbos are in business here. The runner on first and second with no outs. And step in steps in Jimmy Evans, senior right fielder for this ball club. Evans always a power threat with the bat. You know, this is definitely a critical at bat for Markel here. He's got this, he's got a favorable lefty lefty matchup. You know, he's just got to settle in here. Start throwing strikes, get the ball over the plate, attack these hitters. Definitely. Evans always poses a threat. Three home runs this year. Pitcher gets set. Here's the pitch. Fastball inside for a strike. 0 1 to the senior right fielder. Yeah, really important for this pitcher just to settle in. Obviously, two men on base, but just want to throw strikes here. Maybe get a ball on the ground. Potential double play. Looks in for the sign, gets ready. Delivery. Oh, runners in motion now. Throw to third. He is safe. The Jumbos showing off their speed right there with a double steal. Now two runners in scoring position yep. for the power threat, Jimmy Evans. You know, it's two more stolen bags just there like that go. in the first inning. Just like we talked about, just like that, the Jumbos are in business. Evans in a 1-1 even count. Yep, they're going to be testing Davis behind the plate all day today. The pitch. Swung on, hit sharply. Nice play by the second baseman, and there's an out, but an RBI. For Runners on second and third, just, just move over. A sharp one hopper to the second baseman. Evans really hit that one in the screws, just, just unfortunate placement. And now yeah, absolutely. stepping in is the cleanup hitter, Connor Flavin. Senior captain, also playing first base. Another power threat in this lineup. Here's the pitch. Now one's a ball outside. Definitely looking to potentially put a good swing on one here. 1-0 count. 
three homers on the year. So he's definitely a threat from the right side. Here's the pitch. Ball low. Yeah, you know, Flavin's a hitter's count right here. He's in the driver's seat. You know, I think if you're Flavin, you know, you want to hit your pitch here. Just elevate. Try to get that ball up in the air. Let the wind take it. See what definitely, happens. Definitely, Bob. Pitcher's had some command issues, so we'll see if he likes to swing or take one. The pitch. Ball high. Rio's the count. Of course, that uh, big righty batter and Clay Soul is on deck. So Flavin definitely going to be very selective here. Potential take. The pitch. Ball low. Pretty close pitch there at the knees, but ball four is called. And now there's runners on first and third for the senior DH, Clay Soul. Soul banged up a little bit so far this year, but he's back in the lineup. Obviously had a great season his sophomore year, so everyone knows that the power's there. He's definitely a threat. Yeah, and you just saw Coach Casey for Johnson Wales making some adjustments to those outfielders. They're moving them over closer towards left. Also got the win to take into account. Here's the pitch. High. Ball. Oh, late steal. The throw in. Oh, it's past the catcher. McCullough with a delayed steal there. As long as, as well as Connor Flavin. Some aggressive base running there for the tough jumbos. And they are able to manufacture another run. Yeah, capturing the lead. Really well executed delayed steal there by Flavin. I mean, I didn't even see him taking off until. And it's proven true here. Just in the first inning. What have you seen so far from this lineup and their base running thus far? I mean, I, I think this is exactly what we were expecting. You know, this team is coming in, you know, having stolen 82 bags already in the season. You know, we know they're going to test the catcher. You know, we know they're going to be running all over the bases today. That's just been the motto of their team. You know, this is yeah. a team coming into the game today only hitting 263, yet they're winning, you know, they, they're well in over 500 right now. They're winning games and scoring a lot of runs while doing it. That they and are. A lot of that is just taking advantage of, of walks stealing bases when they get on, however they can. So, you know, there's a huge difference when you have a power bat up and there's a guy in first versus second. You know, a hit scores a run versus just moving the guy over to third. So, you know, I think that's just the motto here with, with Tufts, just moving runners into scoring position and then, you know, letting the big bats get a hit and move those runners in. Definitely it's worked well for them thus far. As we mentioned, sweeping Bowden this weekend. Clay steps into the box. Pitcher looking in for the sign from the catcher. Gets set. The 1 0 delivery. Swung on, a high fly ball. Second baseman camped under it. And there's the second out of the inning. Now s stepping into the box is Ben Leonard, the left fielder. Yeah, that's just a nice job on my Carl. Just just settling down, getting it out there. Definitely. That's a it's a big out, of course. The man on second base. Now there's two outs. Get your infield settled and hopefully get out of jam here. Raquel delivers. Strike in the outside corner. 0 and 1. Nice nice pitch right there. That's a Pretty hard to do, of course, when you're a little shaky for the inning. A couple runs already in, but a nice pitch there to get him ahead 0-1. The pitch. Breaking ball in for a strike, 0-2. Leonard, another power threat in this lineup. Two home runs on the year. We yeah. had a great weekend. He's definitely one of the hot bats in this lineup. Bob, you were at the games. Definitely had a great weekend. Got a, got a little hot, hitting some balls hard. Yeah, absolutely. Just hitting the ball hard to right field, you know, just going with some of those inside pitches. The pitch. Just outside. Good looking pitch there, but yeah. called the ball. So now the count is one and two. Fastball there in the outside corner. Looks good. That's a it's a good 0-2 pitch from Markel there, looking into his catcher now. Flavin leading off second base. Oh. And just a little warning for the pitcher and the shortstop there just to keep Flavin honest. Yeah, I think that's just going to be the name of the game today for Markel, just locating, getting ahead and getting ahead and counts. Markel fires. 
Ball low, blocked by the catcher. Now the count is even at two and two. What are you thinking if you're Leonard here in the box? I'm thinking he's going to go with one more off speed. Um, we'll see. He went for that 0-2 fastball, so all bets are off. Markel delivers. Pop fly. Shortstop camped under it. And there's the third out of the inning. So the Jumbos put two runs of their own on the board off of one hit and a couple stolen bases. We'll be back to you in a couple moments here at Saul Gittiman Park. Welcome back to Medford. As the Tufts University Jumbos are out to a 2-1 lead here going into the top of the second inning. And leading off for the Bobcats, the third baseman, Xavier Botello. Yeah, I could hear in that half inning in the, uh, in the Johnson Wales dugout, one of the coaches talking about just getting the ball up in the air to left field. I think that's going to be critical today. Just let the wind carry it. Pitch. Swung and hit sharply the shortstop. Fleischer gobbles that up. Goes over the first and one away. Wells working quickly there. Nice one pitch, one out. Good start to the second inning. Now walking into the box for the Johnson and Wales Wildcats is Owen Davis, the catcher. Lefty batter. A little lefty lefty matchup here. Wells looks in. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball low, ball one. Of course, the Johnson Wells team made a regional appearance last year. Looking to get one here in Medford. Here's the pitch. Low again, 2-0. And it's pretty, it's pretty striking. You've got two different types of ball clubs. You got this Johnson Wells team that's hitting a respectable 308 in the year, and then Tufts, it's obviously coming in only hitting 263, but 17 6 record, quite impressive. Here's the pitch. Here's a strike outside, 2 yeah, 1. Yeah, you know, this is definitely somewhat of a rebuilding year for this Tufts team. They lost a couple of huge bats in their lineup last year, and Peter DeMaria and Miles Reed, you know, guys who just, Miles hitting, you yeah. know, are close record to 500. Seven here. Here's a pitch. There's a ball, 3 1. So, so, you know, sometimes when you just don't have. You know the same bats in the lineup. You gotta you gotta get it done in other ways, and you know that's been the base running and the pitching this year. Definitely, this Tufts Jumbos has really revolutionized their game. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss. Catcher a little bit behind that fastball. Now it's three two. Nice pitch there from Wells, getting the count to full. As he gets ready, kicks and fires. Outside ball four. So Davis works out a walk here. And Johnson Wales has run on base. And steps in Griffin Schneider, the DH. Righty batter. Schneider comes into this contest with two home runs on the air. Definitely a power threat. Put one out, especially with this wind. Wells delivers. Strike. Nice you know, old 
Oh, fastball on the outside corner for Wells there. see how Wells, when he's got runners on, he's definitely shortening that step to, to home plate. He's going more of a slide step, abbreviated slide step. So, you know, it seems that he's... It's sharp at the middle. Here it is. Oh, and that one is away from Flavin, but they get the out at second base. Potential double play there for the Jumbos, but they get the out. Johnson Wells with a runner on base. Call flipped that one to Izzy Fleischer. Throw is just a bit low. As I was saying, he, he's kind of a little quick to the plate, and I think his, his arm is lagging a little bit behind. You can see some of those breaking ball pitches are kind of out and away. You know, I'd like to see yep. him just keep the arm and body at, at the same speed. Wells delivers. Strike. 0 1. Wells mixing in a healthy amount of fastballs today. Seems to be working on that outside corner, getting those calls. The pitch. This one's hit in the air, out to left. We know what that wind can do today. Lenny working back on the wall, makes the play. So Johnson and Wales, no runs that inning. And now the tough jumbos will have a crack at it at the bottom of the second. Welcome back, Saul Goodwin Park. As the Jumbos take a crack at it here at the bottom of the second. And leading things off is the catcher, Connor Brawla. Brawla Jr. Yeah, just six at bats so far in the season for Brawla. Pitch. Healthy hack. Oh yeah, one. But, but, but hitting 333 in those at bats, you know, just a guy with a lot of power, you know, in a midweek game, getting his opportunity and hoping to make the most of it. Here's the pitch. This one's grounded over the jumping pitcher. Shortstop comes across, fires, one away. Nice play by the shortstop. Coming across and delivering a nice throw yeah. to Kelly at first base. Hassan, he is really smooth out there at short. That was a really nice play. And now in steps Pat Solomon, the third baseman. Of course, Solomon, 20 stolen bases coming into this contest. Yeah, he is not the guy you want to get <laughs> let get on base right now. Pitch, swung on, base hit. There's a base hit for Patrick Solomon to left field. First pitch swinging, and now you know he's on base. Definitely a threat to take a bag here. Yeah. I think if if, uh, if you're Markel right now, you got to be real quick to the plate. You know, maybe try to mix in a couple looks, try to pick him off, get him off balance, but... I would fully expect for Solomon to be taken off here to second. Now batting the shortstop, Ozzy Fleischer. Markel looks in. And throw over to first base, of course, keeping Solomon honest over there. A little record watch for Solomon. Tufts record is currently 25 stolen bases set by Pat Solomon in 1976. Solomon could be on pace to break that this year. Pitch. Strike. Yeah, you can kind of see that abbreviated slide step right there. Definitely mindful of the, the speed over there. Knowing what this Jumbo's lineup is capable of doing on the base paths. Quick throw over to first. Safe. Obviously, Markel keeping in mind. Salmon looking into the catcher. 
Fleischer waits. A little step off here. Third one already this at bat. Yeah. Definitely something they're keeping in mind as we've talked about. Ball's thrown away. Solomon will get the second base. Now the jumper's a, r a runner in scoring position. Yeah, if you're Markel there, you're definitely kicking yourself. But if you're Solomon, you know, <laughs> let the pitcher do it for you, you know, moving over to second. So now the Jumbos would have run in scoring position with one out here. Fleischer getting ready in an 0-1 count. Markel looks. Shortstop runs in. And a balk is called. Balk is called on Markel there. Solomon will get to third base now. Really seeing what's going on with this tough team on the base paths. Just getting into the minds. Yeah, and it's just team. compounding mistakes. The pitch. Fastball in for a strike. Counts now even at one on one. Just throwing those balls away. A quick balk like that and just you know, you go from a runner on first to a runner on yeah. third and there you in go. A matter of two pitches. There you go. Fleischer. Looking in for Markel, here's a pitch. Low and away. And you know, Fleischer is a guy you really don't want to have runners in scoring position with. He's not a guy nope. who strikes out a lot. He's a he's a guy who puts the ball in play. And you know, good things happen when you put the ball in play, especially with runners in scoring position. So you know, I wouldn't be surprised here if Fleischer's just looking to put the ball in play, nice contact swing, hit it over to the right side and score that run in. 289 hitter and Fleischer. Pitch. There it is, hit on the ground. Third baseman slides. Makes the throw over to first. Kelly catches it, but a run will score. And that's exactly what I'm talking about right there, just having a runner in scoring position and putting the bat on the ball. You know, even though he's out, that's an RBI. He just did a job for the team. So that's there a quality at bat in my, in my view. Oh, yeah. There it is. Jumbo's turning one hit. A walk and an error into a run there. Now four runs off two hits. And steps the leadoff hitter, Fleckner. Pitch. Strike. And oh one's the count. Here's the pitch. Swing and miss. Oh two. Two healthy fastballs there from Markel. Ahead of the hitter Fleckner. 0-2. Delivers. Outside. 1-2 is the count. Two outs now. Nobody on base. Fleckner looking to put a ball in play here. Pitch. Strike three called. Inside fastball bested Fleckner there. Now the Johnson and Wales ball club will have a chance to crack at it in the top of the third after we come back in a few moments. Welcome back here at Saul Goodman Park. Pitching change here for the tough jumbos. Salas Reed checks in. The big right-hander. And what do you think we're going to see from Silas today? I mean, Silas is one of these guys who's who's in the starting rotation. You know, he's he typically pitches a lot in, in, in these midweek games. But, you know, he's a reliable arm for the jumbos. He throws hard, you know, upper 80s. Yeah. You know, occasionally touching a 9. I mean, this is a guy like... He's going to try to beat you with the fastball, but, I mean, he's got a good mix of pitches, too. He, th he throws a really nice changeup, a really and nice 12-6 yeah. over-the-top curveball, and also can mix a slider in there, too. So he's got a good mix of pitches. I'm expecting him to really go out these batters with the fastball, but. 
Absolutely. So leading off for Johnson and Wales this inning. Trevor Juan, the center fielder. And a little little error on the scoreboard part of things. It's three to one, not four to one. So two run lead for the Jumbos. Silas pitching from the wind up here. Fires and delivers. Strike. Yeah, that is just coming in really firm right now. Very firm. Uh, stark contrast from Wells, of course, the southpaw. Change of speeds. Pitch. That one's flied and out of play. And our first car is hit of the day. Maybe a possible broken windshield there. Yeah, I think it caught the front of the hood. Okay. It doesn't look like any damage. Nothing too bad. The 0-2. Ball outside. Surprisingly, not as many windshields hit at this ballpark as you would expect. But yeah, you know, some of these balls at the bat looks like they're absolutely heat-seeking for a car, but, you know, it somehow it just always finds pavement and not a car. Pitch. Breaking ball, strike three, swinging. You know, there you see that, that breaking ball right there. That is such a stark speed change difference. You know, you're going from a fastball that's 86, 87, 88, and then you're seeing a curveball that's, you know, 75 miles an hour. That's a really big speed drop-off. You know, no tough. surprise, he's swinging way over the top on that. Now hitting second is Jack Obert, pitch. In for a strike. Low strike at the knees there. Firm fastball from Reed. Yeah, he's looking really sharp right now. Here's the oh, one. Another strike. Almost the same location. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that umpire's going to call. I think if you're Johnson Wales here, you just got to jump on those pitches. Yeah, now 0-2. Oh Reed delivers. Ball outside. Appeared to be change up or a curveball of some sorts. Looking yeah, to mix it up a little I, I'm bit. I'm thinking if I was if I was Reed there, I would go another fastball, try to get the bat off his shoulder. Definitely best of these batters so far. And here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. A quick two strikeouts for Silas Reed here. Really featuring that power fastball. Two outs now. And Miles Kelly. We'll walk into the box, the lefty first baseman. Kelly, as we mentioned, 402 hitter coming to this contest. Strike. 0 1 now. Silas looking into Brawla. Couple shakes. Taking a long time here. And here's the pitch. Ball low. Silas now, one and one for Reed. Getting ready to deliver. Pitch, just outside. Two one now for Kelly in the driver's seat here. Yeah. Think you're looking for something to hit here for Kelly? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Reed's been doing a good job of keeping the ball down in the zone right now, but. Pitch, just outside. 3-1 now, two outs here. Yeah, you're definitely in the driver's seat here. Reed delivers. That's strike. Full count now, two outs. You know, I couldn't stress how important it is to keep the ball down in the zone today. You know, if you leave a couple of pitches up, all it takes is one swing for that ball to be well over the left field fence, especially with this wind blowing out. See that flag blown out. Here's yeah. the pitch. This one's hit right field. Evans moving over, and he makes a nice running play for the third out of the inning. Yeah, great grab by Evans there. No runs, no hits for the Johnson Wales Wildcats, and we'll be back soon as the Jumbos take a crack at it in the bottom of the third inning.
Did you bring you this contest? Up. Yeah, Jumbo's got the meat of their lineup up right now. Pitch. Strike. Outside corner for Markel. Nice nice pitch there. Yeah, I'm thinking if you the Jumbos, you know, try to jump on a couple pitches here. Let's expand this lead. Um, Definitely. In the field, let's let's get let's get out of this inning and get back to the bats. Try to chip away at this two run lead. Definitely. Pitch. This one's lined. Base hit. Base hit right past the Lundgren. And in steps Jimmy Evans, of course, the senior right fielder. And just like that, Jumbo's have a runner on base and could potentially get things in motion here. What are you doing here if you're Markel, you know, think one now? McCullough is somewhat of a recent, you know, addition to this tough lineup. Didn't really play that much to start the year off, but, you know, got his opportunity, made the most of it, and now he's kind of a regular guy in the lineup. So, you know, not a ton of stolen base attempts, so. Markel delivers. High pop-up. Left fielder now under it. And one away. Yeah, that pitch was definitely a little bit up in the zone for Evans there. You know, just a yeah, little bit behind just a little it. over aggressive. Yeah, a little over aggressive. Now steps in Flavin, of course. Big first baseman. Cole leading off the first. You know, it's crazy. You can look at these outfielders right now, and they are playing really deep, almost on the warning track. Something to keep in mind of. Here's the pitch. Hits sharply to the shortstop. Six. Now is dropped. No, I'm just going to say it time and time again. It's these little errors, these compounding mistakes. They're going to come back to bite you always. Jimbo team has proven to take advantage of those mistakes. Hassan with a little flip throw to Bert. Dropped. Potential you know, for Markel to bear down. Just you know, make execute some really good pitches here and try to get, try to get, uh, try to get an out here. Markel looking in against Seoul. Shortstop comes over. Pick off. Safe. The diving McCullough gets in safely. Yeah. Nice move there. Definitely. Hassan was pretty quick to the bag there. I thought they had him beat, you know. I, I think you just need a little bit quicker move to second there, and, he, and he's probably out. Runners in motion. Clay hits one high. That ball is And that one is <laughs> gone, <laughs> folks. Gone. A three-run oh blast. Oh, my God. For Clay Saul, a moonshot. I mean, that ball must be. Then Crank is going to have a chance here. And that one was a no-doubter. I mean, you can kind of see some people in the field hockey field back there. I could have sworn I saw them ducking <laughs> as that ball was coming in. My goodness. A missile from Clay Sol. You know, that's what I talk about. Pitch. High for a ball. Yeah, you said it, Bob. These jumbos, they get runners on base. Ball two. Yeah, definitely some action now in the Johnson Wells bullpen. I'm thinking, thinking. Um, in the bottom of this third inning, a lot of ball game left. So we'll see if this jump. Ball four inside, and Leonard is now in base. Of course, Leonard, another one of the speedsters on this ball club, has stolen 15 out of 16 attempts on the year. A remarkable clip. Kevin Casey will now go out to the, the mound. Potential pitching change, we'll see here. Home run from Saul. Of course, that wind, but no that doubter. wind did not matter. Could have had 20 miles an hour coming in, that one would have been gone. An absolute moonshot. Has the Jumbos up six to one here. And now coming in, looks like the righty. Number 14, Ben Fosberg. Just like that, another pitcher in. Yeah, I mean, I think this is exactly what you got to do with this tough team. Just, you know, attack these pitchers. You know, kind of come at them a little bit. Make Johnson Wales go into their bullpen. That Johnson Wales lineup, you know, they can hit. So really looking to get a couple outs here and get the bats going. We'll be back in a few moments here at Salkinden Park.
Welcome back. After a pitching change now. Bosberg on the mound, the righty. Gonna be facing another right here and the catcher, Connor Brawla. In 14 sets, time is called. Fosberg will step off the mound. Yeah, I'm not sure what that time is about. Some sort of communication between the umpire. High for a ball. You know, we just saw Fosberg there ask the catcher to repeat the signs. You know, with this first game under the line. You know, that comes into play as the sun goes down here. His pitch swung on. A high pop fly. Yeah, you, know, now. you know, those plays aren't easy at all. You know, that's a really nice job by Kelly there to just get under it. You know, the, the wind's blowing pretty hard. You know, once that ball gets up in the air, it's moving all over the yeah. place. Especially at a place like Sulgoon Park, we know how the winds howl around here. So a nice play there for Kelly. Two outs now for Fosberg. And Solomon steps in the third base. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of hit and run type situation here where Ben Leonard takes off. Leonard, 15 stolen bases on the year, known to run as well. Pitch. All percentage base stealers for toss. Got to move quick. Fosberg delivers. Low strike. On the outside corner, quick 0-2. Fosberg, two nice pitches there. Settling in as he comes into this game. Yeah, really nice job just coming in and throwing strikes. Got that nice pop fly to the first baseman, Kelly, and looks in at the 0-2 pitch. Delivers. Salmon fights one, hits a nice liner at the right, and it's caught. A nice job by Fosberg there coming in and getting out of trouble. And we will be back in a few moments as Johnson Wales will take a crack at it at the top of the fourth inning. Welcome back to Salgoon Park. As Tufts is up six to one over the Johnson and Wales Wildcats. Just got an update that that Sow home run went 410 feet. Wow, an absolute moonshot. Of course, Sow hit that home run back in the third inning. And EJ Leone in the box. Pitch, fastball, ball. Pretty close pitch there in the, the corner, but called the ball, 1-0. And Leone, of course, a dangerous bat. This ball club is a pitch. There's a strike. One one's the count. Interesting strategy by the Jumbo is going for the opener approach, working well so far. Yeah, I mean, pitch. these midweek games, you know, it's always nice to just speed get on the corner ball. Guys who who typically throw, just get them some innings. You know, keep their arms loose. Yeah, it's worked well so far. And here's the pitch. And now he's in an even count against Leone. Pitch. And that one's flat out. Fleckner camped under it. One away. Yeah, it's just a really nice job by Reed there, keeping one of the best hitters in this lineup just a little bit off balance, you know. He didn't really get a great swing on it. You know, that off speed just gets gets him to pop right up. That's key. You know, these, these Wildcats have some big bats, and if you can keep them quiet, then you're doing well. So now in steps, Riley Hassan, the shortstop, number nine. Pitch. This one swung on, fouled away in foul territory. What have you seen from Reed so far? I think he's just locating his fastball unbelievably well right now. I I, I think he's just getting ahead of counts in when he's 0-1, 0-2, 1-2, Then it gives you a little bit more room to be throw a little bit of variation of different pitches and pitch. Mess around with your pitch sequences. 
High ball right there. Evens the count at 1-1. One one. Yeah, Reed's really had his way with these hitters thus far. Still early in his outing, but so far so good. The pitch. Ball low. Just missed. 2-1 now. Great eye from the shortstop right there, Hassan. Here's the pitch. This one's roped out to left. Leonard tracks, and home run. Riley Hassan with a shot out to left field. That's just a really nice job going with that pitch right there. Just hitting it hard up into the air, letting that wind take it. Yeah, we talked about that wind today, and that one was hit sharply. And now Hassan has his second homer of the year. That's just exactly what you gotta do when you get a hard, hard, hard thrower on the mound. Just get up there, not be intimidated. Just put the bat in the ball, and you know, good things happen. In steps Patello now. The pitch, swing and miss. Oh, one's the count. Yeah, we talked about it. A lot of offense in this Johnson and Wales ball club on display right there. Pitch. Strike. Reed ahead quickly, 0-2 now. No, it's just a nice job by Reed. You just gave up that home run, but you come right back and you're up 0-2 on the next batter. Impressive. And now is the pitch. Swung on and popped out of play. Watch out for a windshield on that one. <laughs> Hopefully Tufts has some maybe insurance for all these windshields. <laughs> maybe a little partnership with Safe Flight with the pitch. <laughs> Ball low. 1-2, the breaking ball. Mixing it up on that one. Reed looks into Brawl for the sign. And sets and fires. Swing and a miss. And batter's called out. Strike out there for Silas Reed. As he retires Batello on the breaking ball. Nice pitch there from Reed to get the out. After giving up that home run, settled in nicely. And then steps in the catcher, Owen Davis. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Firm fastball there from Reed on the outside corner. Impressive stuff by Reed really setting in after that. Just shows how cool, calm, and collected he is on the mound. Pitch. Swing and a miss. Oh, this inning. Fires. Just missed on the outside yeah. corner. Another fastball. Looks close, but a good eye from the catcher. Davis, and he gets ready. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout for Reed. Johnson and Wales picks up a run off a home run. The score is 6-2. to two. And we will see you in a few moments. And the Jumbos will have a crack at it in the bottom of the fourth inning. Welcome back as we bring you Jumbo Cast coverage from this matchup. And Ozzie Fleischer will lead things off for the Jumbos, commanding a 6 2 lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Fosberg still on the mound, looks in for the pitch. He fires. This one's hit. Diving shortstop makes the play. And Fleischer will beat it out. Yeah, really a nice, nice play from Hassan there, yeah. but. 
The wheels of Fleischer bested him, but a good job keeping that one on the you know, infield. That's pretty much the same kind of ground ball that Fleischer hit yeah. in his first at bat, but just a little bit of, well, better hit, and you know what the legs he gets there. Yeah, and just like that, another jumbo on base. Fleischer also with 10 stolen bases, and in steps Henry Fleckner. Yeah, back at the top, top of the lineup here for the Jumbos. Pitch. Off speed. Ball outside. Yeah, that was a nice looking pitch right there. Yeah, it looked close, just outside. Now Fleckner hitting with a 1 0 count. Fosberg looks in for the sign. Checks Fleischer. And Odell throw over to first. Keep him honest. Seen a lot of that so far today. Yeah. I mean, you got to be that way. Just just coming into this game, you got to know that this tough baseball team is really aggressive on the base path. Pitch. Fly ball. Hit out to the center fielder. One, and that one's caught. One away. Good job by Fosberg there getting the out. Throwing strikes. And proved successful for him thus far in this outing. After coming in for the southpaw, Markel. In steps the freshman, freshman Jesse McCullough. Fleischer on first base, of course. Fosberg checks and deals. Off speed, ball low. 1 0 is the count. You know, Fosberg is doing a really nice job just keeping that ball down right now. Yeah, I mean, that's what you got to do. I mean, that's the name of the game get ground balls, some swings and misses, and get some success there. Pitch. Check swing up. Oh, another one. Oh! Just misses a car. Just missed a pedestrian too. Oh, wow. Got to watch out here at Saul Goodman Park. You never know what'll come your way. Maybe if you're a fan, bring a glove. Got to be prepared. Fosberg delivers. Hits sharply. Diving play. What There's one. Play. There's two. Double plow oh, safe. Just, just an absolute missed a double play. What play a play. Obert, there. Obert with a great diving play to get Oz Ozzie Fleischer out at first, second base. Wow. Spectacular play there. Now there are two outs, and Jimmy Evans will step in the box. Incredible play. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty much full extension. That ball was absolutely smoked off the bat of McCullough. Just you no, know, really nice job just executing there. Looked like a double play, but... Bang, bang at first. Call beats it out. Here's a pitch. High ball. One knows the count. Evans in the box. Yeah, Evans definitely looking to do some damage here. Had that RBI off that sharp ball, hit the second base. And the pitch. Outside. Ball. Close fastball there, but good eye from Jimmy Evans. And now he's in the driver's seat, 2-0. Two outs here. Yeah, Evans definitely just got to look for his pitch here. McCullough leads. Runner in motion. Ball's in the dirt. McCullough taking a wide turn, and just like that, runner in scoring position. Just yet yeah, another stolen base for, for the go. tough jumbos. Just like that. Giving themselves a chance here with two outs. Trying to extend that four-run lead. Now, now Evans with an opportunity with runners in scoring position. Evans, a senior from Norwalk, Connecticut. Yeah, just one of these big bats in this lineup. You know, a guy that Tufts Jumbos really look to to produce on the offensive side. Little miscommunication here. Fosberg looks into the dugout and steps on the rubber. Evans getting set. Pitch. High. Ball four. And there's a walk for Jimmy Evans. Now the Jumbos have runners on first and second for senior captain Connor Flavin. Flavin, of course, a big first baseman utility guy. And some would call him a DJ LeMayu type, kind of a jack of all trades. Yeah, I mentioned that on Saturday. I mean, he's got just the, the same build. He plays all over the place, just a consistent bat. I mean, this guy is basically DJ LeMayu, but just the... The D3 version, bait. The pitch. B version. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm sad to announce I am a Yankee fan, so I do appreciate that. <laughs> nice to have one here on the Tufts Jumbos. 
Now a 1-0 count. You have two outs for Connor Flavin. Fosberg. Here's the pitch. Fastball, strike. Nice, nice pitch there from Fosberg. Getting himself even in the count here with two outs, of course, facing the big bat and Connor Flavin. At some point it's that bat too. We've seen it before. Swing and a miss. Be right here with two strikes. Nice off speed for Fosberg. Yeah, we've seen it today and yeah, it, it just get works. the runners in motion, you know, potentially score that runner from first if it is like say like a gap shot. You never know with this tough ball club. Bottom four, two outs. Now this has got to be your best best executed pitch right here. Fosberg makes the pitch. Something these jumbos do frequently, but the catcher Davis keeps him at bay. Wind's picking up a little bit here. Yeah, it is how Saul Gittleman. Something we've mentioned. Here's the pitch. Flavon hits from the air to left. Going back on it. That's Home gone. run! Just like wow. we said it, wins picked up, Flavin hit one out to left, and there's a home run, a three-run home run for the senior captain, Connor Flavin. Quite honestly, Justin, I did not think that that had any chance Neither of getting Neither did it. I, but hey, that's how it is here at Saul Gittemann Park. Of course, they moved that fence in, and the winds are picking up here at this night game under the lights. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was a big talk coming into the season. Everybody's talking about how that field went from 354 and left to now just 330. Wow. You know, with some of these power, like righties, you know, it's a lot easier to put a ball out, especially with the wind. Speaking of power righties, here steps in Clay Saul, who, of course, hit that monstrous home run. Fosberg looks in. Yeah, just deep breath from Fosberg here. Just settle down, get this last out, get your bats up. Try to get a ground ball, potentially. Here's the pitch. Off speed, nice pitch there, strike. You could feel him here. Just like that, a home run. Pitch. Oh, an inside fastball. Looks like the catcher just missed it. Absolutely yeah. smoked the Got umpire. Got the umpire. Man. Hopefully he's okay in that one. Of course, we're hearing people say don't rub it, which is good advice. Obviously, it hurts on a yeah, colder night like, like this. He's in pain. Colder night. Hopefully he's okay. We've seen a lot of offense here thus far, Bob. What have you What have you seen from both of these teams? Uh, I mean, I, I think this this Tufts Jumbos team is just doing a really nice job of of just taking advantage when they're in hitters counts, and you know they get to a point where they're in a three one, two one type count, and they're just getting their pitch and they're they're going with it, and you know even when they're down in the count, they're just choking up on the bat, stepping up in the box, and just protecting the plate and taking advantage of a pitcher's mistake. Yeah, definitely. But if you're Johnson and Wales, you just want to get back into the dugout, and you know, one swing of the bat, they've done it already. You can get right back in this ball game. Only bottom of the fourth inning, so a lot of baseball left to be played here in Medford. Brief intermission here. We'll be right back in a few moments. Thank you for waiting with us here. It's all good in park. Umpire's hopefully okay now. Yeah, he's really tough to okay. get hit with those pitches, especially on a colder night like this. Yeah, it stings. 
So 1-1 one, one now, two outs, Souls on the box with no runners on base. Fosberg looks in and gets ready to deliver. Pitch, breaking ball high, ball. Two ones the count now, two outs. Salmon, Soul, sorry, in the box here, two to one is the count. Looking to get a pitch to hit here potentially. Fosberg, maybe ground ball. Pitch in strike. Good looking fastball there. Yeah, just well executed right in that outside corner. Count is even at twos. Davis gives the sign. And we're ready to go. Two, two, two. Here's the pitch. Hit one over. Third baseman fields it. Throws. And there's the out. Nine to two is the score. End of four innings of play. Johnson and Wales will get a crack at it here at Saul Goodman Park. Welcome back to Jumbo Cast. As we kick things off here in the top of the fifth inning, the Tough Jumbos currently lead the Johnson and Wales Wildcats nine to two. Reed still on the mound, and he gets ready to face the DH Griffin Schneider. Schneider, a big right-handed bat, and the pitch. Healthy hack there, fouled straight back. Yeah, he was definitely on that. He was ready. Gotta be thinking maybe these Johnson Wells hitters are looking to get on the fastball. Maybe yeah, definitely. Some I mean, scrape some runs across. You know, down seven runs right now. You know, get just get runners on Good and delivery. Strike. Good looking pitch there from Reed on the outside corner. No to dial it up to 90. 0 2 is the count. Silas delivers. Off speed, high ball. 1 2 is the count now. Schneider in the box. And Reed looking in, shaking. Gets ready to set, delivers. Ball low, off speed there. Now the count is even. If you're Schneider here, just definitely take advantage of getting back in this count. Schneider, two homers on the air. This wins, you never know. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike out there for Silas Reed. Healthy hack from Schneider. But the power fastball of Reed bests him there. Definitely notice though, these hitters are ready to hit right now. They know they you know gotta get the bats going. Yeah, Obviously absolutely. Know anything to left's got a chance today. In steps in, Sanchez Guerra. Strike. Oh one. The count to the left fielder. Sanchez Square, a respectable 267, comes to this one. And there's a high strike. 0 2, one out. Reed settled in for the 0 2 pitch. Shaking. Long pause there, and the pitch. Just miss on the outside corner. 
Yeah, definitely not surprised he came back to that fastball there. A heavy fastball there for Reed. And a timeout here called. Yeah, you see the umpire there fixing that uh, that chest plate. Looks like his hand's all right. That is good to see. Let's get some functional, yeah. functional movement in there. Good to see. And here's the pitch. Off speed, got him. Two strikeouts in the inning for Reed. As he's been all over the zone, just attacking these Johnson and Wales hitters. And in steps the leadoff hitter, Trevor Juan, the center fielder. Reed delivers. Swing and a miss. Looks like a changeup or a slider of some sort he's been working in today. Yeah, you know, you, when, you, when you have such good command of the fastball and you're throwing it for strikes consistently, it just makes it that much easier to mix in those off-speed pitches. Pitch, another off-speed, swung on and missed. It just makes it that much more harder to hit. Oh, two's the count now. Reed with four strikeouts already in this ball game, looking for another. Here's the 0-2. Off-speed, strike three called. Three strikeouts in the inning for Silas Reed. Five strikeouts for the game. No runs off, no hits for Johnson and Wales, and the tough jumbos will kick things off in the bottom of the fifth after a few moments. The Jumbos will kick things off here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Of course, the score is 9-2. to two. Jumbos with six hits. Johnson and Wales with three. And leading things off for us here is Ben Leonard. The pitch. Swung and hit sharply up the middle. Gobbled up by the second baseman and one away. Obert with a little 4-3 put out there. Quick work there for Fosberg. Really wants to get these Johnson and Wales hitters back in the dugout. Hope we get some balls up in the air as we've seen what happens with these with these Gittleman Park wins. Prowla now, the catcher, steps in the box. Fosberg looks in, sets, and deals. Off speed in for a strike. Yeah, that was just a nice sharp breaking ball right there. Nice pitch. Rao for two on the day. The junior catcher. The pitch. Nice looking fastball there. Two good pitches from Fosberg. Yeah, that's exactly what you got to do. Just get uh, get ahead in these counts. Oh, two ahead of the batter now. Here's the delivery. Off speed, low for a ball. And you can see some fans out there in left field, kind of to the left of the foul pole. I've never seen them up there in the bleachers. That's wow. a new one for yeah, me. It's a, it's a decent little spot there. Yeah, not bad. A little different vantage point here at Saul Goodman Park. The pitch. Off speed, got him. Three good pitches there that are bad for the pitcher, Fosberg. And he retires Brawla, and he's got himself two outs. And he'll face Patrick Solomon, the third baseman. Solomon with a hit and a run today and two at-bats. Looking to get something going here. Of course, that's 20 stolen bases on the year. Pitch, high ball. 1-0 is the count now. Lights starting to come into play here as the sun comes down. Yeah, you know, pretty decent cloud cover here too, so it's starting to get a little dark. 
Here's the pitch. Popped up to the first baseman. Kelly camped under it. Calls off second baseman Olbert, and there's three gone. So three up, three down for the Tufts Jumbos. Score still nine to two here. And Johnson and Wales will kick things off in the top of the sixth. You're listening to JumboCast. Welcome back. Saul so Gittemann Ballpark. And in case you missed it, Tufts are winning 9-2 to two over the Johnson and Wales Wildcats. And the second baseman, Jack Obert, will lead things off. Silas looks in and delivers. Fastball low, ball. Good looking pitch there, but good eye from the yeah. second baseman. Reed coming in for his fourth inning of work. He's looked really sharp so far. Obert one for two today. Here's a pitch. Strike. Counts even now at once. Yeah, if you're Johnson and Wales, really just looking to get on base here and obviously get those bats going, as we know they can do. Here's a pitch. Swing and a miss. Change up. Low no, there. No action in the Jumbo's bullpen. Yeah. So it looks like Reed's going to be out there for at least a few more innings. It's like that, you know, that opener method working well so far. We've seen that in the big leagues. A couple teams do it. And the pitch. Grounded. Fleischer diving. Past the diving Fleischer. And Obert is on with his second hit of the ballgame. Johnson Wales has a runner on first now. Yeah, that's just a nice, nice piece of hit in there. Just choking up on the bat, stepping up in the box, and just protecting that plate, setting that ball right back up the middle. And in steps Kelly, of course. The big first baseman. Four home runs on the year. Reed pitching in the stretch, obviously, now. And the pitch. Firm fastball in there for a strike. 0 1 now is the count. Obert leading off first. Kelly in the box. Reed kicks and fires. Off speed hit down the line. Foul. Kelly kind of on that one pretty well. Definitely, you know, four home runs on the year. Definitely a threat from the yeah. left hand side against this righty. In a tough spot lead. right here, 0 2. Maybe look to just get one on the ground, ball and play here. Reading Obert Honest over there. Yeah, I haven't seen any stolen base attempts yet. Obert the runner. And. Wonder if you're thinking maybe put a runner in motion here or just you know just get guys on base. You know, down seven runs. Yeah. You, know, you know, it's a big risk taking a gamble like that. Just yeah. taking a runner off, you know. You want as many runners on, on base as possible. Pitch. Just outside. Good looking pitch there. Two strikes, but Kelly with a good eye. And now he evens the count at two. Obert leads. Reed looks in. Big right hand delivers. Strike three, outside corner. Nice looking fastball there for Silas Reed as he tallies another strikeout. Really in control today. His eighth strikeout of the ball game. In three, a little over three innings of work. 
and steps in EJ Leone, of course, one player of the week for the GNAC last week, and and strike. Obviously a threat. One out here. Reed racking up the strikeouts today. Yeah, definitely. Long pause here. Here's the pitch. A little bit of a half swing there, but he goes 0-2. Yeah, Reed just doing a really nice job of getting ahead of these counts. Really hitting the spots too, featuring that heavy fastball. 0-2, fastball got him. Reed tallies another strikeout. Domination continues for the tall right-hander. Really Here's featuring that heavy fastball. Here's Hassan. Hit that home run last time yeah. he was up. Yeah, yeah, he did. Hoping to replicate that in this at bat, get something going for these Wildcats. So we'll see here. The pitch, low fastball, apartment. Facing the right fielder. Here's the pitch. Swung on sharply past the diving Solomon. And just like that, Johnson Wales has a run on first and second. Just a really nice piece, piece of hitting by Hassan there. Again, just going with that outside fastball, hitting it hard. Great job against you know the, the hard throwing read there. Two hard hit balls to the left hand side. Of course, that home run he hit earlier in the game. In steps the batter, Patillo, the third baseman. Runner in scoring position now. The top of the sixth inning. Reed looks in for the sign. Here's the pitch. Blocked by Brow out there, of course. You never know with these runners on base. Try to take advantage of a dirt ball read there, but stops it. Reed behind 1-0 to the batter, Botello. Checks the runner. And here's the pitch. Strike ball. Nice fastball there, but a little outside. Looked good. Came in a little high. 2 0's the count. Yeah, Batello in the driver's seat here. Yeah. Just got to look, find his pitch. Good pitch to hit. Here's the pitch. Nice swing there up the middle. Base hit. The runner, Obert, comes around, and he's stopping at third. But base is loaded now for the Wildcats, and just like yeah, that. Yeah, a couple hits together here. Two runners on the pond here. For Davis, the catcher. Kind of surprised the runner didn't score there. Yeah, you can hear you can hear some yelling coming from the uh, Johnson and Wales dugout. Sounded like somebody definitely wanted that runner to come around. Fleckner test the arm out. Known to have a good arm, but I guess they want to put the hands in, bat in the hands of Davis. The pitch. Low fastball is a ball. Pretty firm fastball there from Reed, but a good eye from the catcher. Now he's ahead, one and zero. Oh. Base is loaded. Two outs. Top of the sixth inning at Salgadoon Park. Here's the 1 0. This one's hit. High fly ball blowing. Yeah, out of play. Push that one will that one get pushed out. Out by the batting cages. You can really see that that, that wind blowing towards the left hand foul yeah, pole. Yeah, I mean, I think any other day with you know the wind blowing in a different direction or even no wind at all, that might stay in right at right yeah. the edge of that bullpen. You know, Give uh, Leonard a tough play to make down the line, but the wind brings that one out of play. Now, one one's the count. Two outs, bases loaded. Here's the pitch. High ball. Two one now. Davis hanging strong. Bases loaded. Johnson and Wells looking to put a couple runners across. Chip away at this seven run deficit. Here's the pitch. Ball's low, blocked. Might have got you know, a little piece of the umpire there. I didn't really get a good look, <laughs> but Iron Man Award for the umpire today. Hagen Strong. And now Case Davis. Definitely got to find his pitch here. He's in the driver's seat, 3-1. You swinging? I think it's it's got to be your pitch. Ball four, and just like that is a walk. And there's a run for Johnson and Wales, just like that. The lead's cut to six. Obert will score. 
And that's an RBI walk for the catcher, Owen Davis. Coach Paul Sfagdis will go out there and talk things over, put in the infield. Yeah, definitely not going to be a pitching change here, but just a good time to, to go out, talk to Reed, you know, give him an opportunity to catch his breath a little bit, reset. Reed, of course, with 10 strikeouts today, but, you know, getting into a little trouble here. Yep. Walks, couple hits. You just got to come back and execute right yeah. here. These have got to be your best pitches of the outing so far and, you know, get this final out. Of course, the big batter, and Griffin Schneider in the box. To pose a threat here. Schneider with seven RBIs in the air, looking to add to that tally. Yeah, you know, a base hit right here definitely can knock in two. You know, Infield a deep gap shot, could straight up. Three. Pitch, swung on, fly ball down the right field line. Evan runs in, Evans runs in, and that one will drop. It's a fair ball. It's a fair ball. Just like that. A great job by Schneider there, sneaking that one in. And two runners will come to score. Another hit for Johnson and Wales. Yeah, and just like that, this is a close game. Nine to five is the score now. With two more runners in scoring position. One more hit right here can make this can a two-run game. The wind, you know, fought that ball back in. Yeah, hundred percent. Nestled it down the line. You know, I, I gotta say, that. I think that ball hit right on the line. Wow. And here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Healthy hack there from Sanchez Guerra. Ball kind of went in the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah. Just plopped it on in there, but he's on with a double. And nine RBIs now in the year. Yeah, it's a double in the books. That's all that matters. Here's the pitch. Good look at fastball there, but it's a ball. One, one's the count. Two outs. Johnson Wales, you know, chipping away here. Three runs in the inning within four. Yeah, just stringing a couple hits together, taking advantage of a walk in the inning. Two guys on the pond. Pitch. This one's popped, coming towards. And Brawa is camped under it. Uh, I thought that one was coming our way, Bob, but <laughs> Brawa made the play. Didn't bring a glove with me today, but. And there it is. So Johnson Wales with three runs there. Nine to five is the score. And we will bring you a special segment here called the Sixth Inning Showdown. So we have Jumbo the Elephant against Willie T. Wildcat. So, Bob, I know you fancy yourself as an outdoorsman. What's your thought on this? Well, I mean, okay, so we got a, a grown elephant that's, you know, 13,000 pounds. You yeah. know, an African wildcat is only 10 pounds. So what, I mean, got to have hundreds, like a pack of hundreds of wildcats to just even, like, equivalently get the weights lined up. What even constitutes a wildcat, you know? One, you can you'd find camping in forests or just stray cat you find in the neighborhood. I don't even know. What's the definition here? Well, I mean, I think we're going with the with the African wildcat. I think that's kind of, okay. yeah, see, okay. It African says Europe, Europe as well, though. I mean, Europe you know? wildcat. Yeah, I mean, when I think of a wildcat, I think of more of like a mountain lion, some kind of like a cougar or something like that. You know, if we're talking about like a cougar, then you know, maybe like three to five cougars, you know, could take down an elephant. But I don't know, elephant coming in almost 14,000 pounds just remarkable in size it's gonna have to go with the jumbo on this one I yeah think. I, I, I think i'm going with the jumbo i really don't one. think there's a chance unless there's a pack of wildcats potentially but i don't think that's part of the deal here i think it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup so the jumbo will edge out the wildcat on this one and now we'll bring you back to action here ozzy fleischer steps in the box yeah a couple of in the nine hole you know couple of ground balls today. This one's hit out of play. Looking for a car. No cars. Only one car today. Yeah, wow. I, I would have I bet more. If it was a bet line, I would have been hammering three yeah, or more. I would have in the house on at least more than one Definitely. car. Definitely. And here's Fleischer. That's a strike. Good looking pitch there. Count is now 0-2. Fosberg's still out there, battling. Do a good job in this at bat. Here's the pitch, off speed. Hits one up the middle, base hit. Ozzy Fleischer with a nice yeah. two-strike base hit there. That's just that's a great job. 
That ball was absolutely tattooed up the middle. Not a terrible pitch from Fosberg, but you know, Fleischer bests him on that one. Yeah, just I mean, stays back. Sometimes you just gotta tip the cap. Yeah. Fleischer was second to the day, of course, as an RBI as well. But just like that, another running threat's on first base. Another running threat in the box. Yeah, I, know. I always love how many dogs come to these games. They're always super fired always up some, and happy to be here. Always some good-looking dogs as well. Here's the, oh bunt, and that one is a ball. Fleckner showing a bunt here, obviously known to be the speedy center fielder for this team in the leadoff spot. Got to be thinking, you know, if the Jumbos are looking to get something going here. Yeah, I'm interested to see if he if he tries to put down another bunt here. Patello playing close runner. Here's a throw down. No one's no covering. One covering. Oh, the and back. put a diving stop from Hassan to keep that ball yeah, from trickling you know at the center. Just, that's just a fake bunt steal right there. There you go. Just Clearly like that. Clearly it worked out. Nobody covering the bag. Just like that. 2-0 for Fleckner and a runner in scoring position. No, really nice call by the third base coach to go with the fake bunt steal there. Yeah, this this Jumbo's coaching staff has really worked in some, you know, New calls this year. Yeah, definitely manufacturing big, runs. Big difference from last year in the in the uh, aggression on the base path. The pitch. Bunt shows, pulls away, and there's a ball. Count is now three and zero. Oh to Fleckner, Fleischer of course on first base. Just to think that these jumbos hit 322 in in last year's season. This year only coming to the gaming 263, yet having a lot of success. pitch ball four very close but Fleckner works out a walk and just like that runners are on first and second and, and steps the second baseman Jesse McCullough yeah. sounds like the Johnson Williams coaching staff not happy with that call gotta be thinking you know maybe a bunt situation here only up four runs you know Johnson Williams got the bats going I'm not sure, Justin. I, I'm thinking, you know, got a runner in scoring position. Immediately, your lineup's up, no outs. Like you might as well, you might as well let him swing away. Runners in motion, double steal on. Safe. Safe. A double steal there. Fleischer leading things. Almost lost his handling on the bag, but he holds on, just like that. Second and third. And if this call stands, it's going to be two more stolen bases for Tufts. Maybe a potential challenge here, or just to talk things over. Yeah, I mean, you could see in that slot attempt, it looks like his hand definitely came off the bag, mm -hmm. but you couldn't really tell from the angle that we're at if if, if the uh, if his foot stayed on. Of course, new AstroTurf for the Jumbos this year. Thing to keep in mind when you run those bases. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sometimes, you know, with the turf, you kind of just slide, and on dirt, you know, there's a little bit more friction. So Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that's not the first time that that's happened in this game. Yeah, of course, Jumbo's been on the field for a couple months now, but, you know, still take, getting some used to. Obviously, they used to play on a pretty nice grass field in Walter Hoskins Field, but brand new Saul Goodman Ballpark was put in this year. And the call but is going to stand. Like, yeah, it's safe. It's going to stand. So, second and third. There's some disagreement, but that call will stand. Fosberg now looks in. Second and third here for McCullough. The 1 0. Fastball strike. Nice looking pitch there. Outside corner gets the count to even. Yeah, McCullough here just definitely looking to put the ball in play. Yeah, preferably I mean, to the right side. Yeah. You know, you got no outs. Big hole over there between the first baseman and the second baseman. Pitch. Off speed, just low. Good looking pitch there. Yeah, that was a really nice pitch. Just good discipline at the plate to just Great discipline. lay off that. Great discipline from the freshman there. Now he's in the driver's seat, 2-1. Two runners in scoring position now. Looking to the add to that four-run lead. And the pitch. Swung on, hit sharp with the shortstop. Gobbled up by Hassan, nice throw, but a run will score. Yeah, that's just a nice job hitting the ball. That is you a know, great job. Get a job done. Good job there from the freshman getting the run in. Hit the ball pretty sharply, but right at the shortstop, Hassan, who made the play. In steps, Jimmy Evans. Runner out there on third. The senior. 
and the pitcher will look in. Fosberg. And see the infield in here. Anything kind of hitting the ground to any of them, they're definitely coming home Still here. Still only one out. Pitch. High ball. Evans now in a hitter's count. 1-0 on him. Evans, two at bats today. Run scored and an RBI on that sharp one he hit second base. Looking to hit one to the outfield here is the pitch. Four on the ground, that may work, but infield's in. Here's the throw, he's safe. Ball's kicked, and Evans will round first, head to second. And just like that, another jumbo run will score. Like you said earlier, Bob, just put the ball in play, things will happen. Yep. Even with the infield in, tough play for the second baseman. Yeah, that throw was definitely low. It's a hard play. And the jumbos make them pay there with a run. You know, that ball wasn't hit super hard. You know, kind of just took yeah. a little bit to his glove side. He's coming around a little off balance. You know, I'm not surprised that throw was a little bit low in the dirt. And still one out here. And in steps the captain, Connor Flavin. Flavin with that home run before. Here's the pitch. Healthy hack here. Yeah, he was looking to put a charge into that baseball. Another one. I think before we got some numbers, I think it was 91 off the bat, 365 feet, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was more like 356. Yeah, maybe even less, but you know, nonetheless, a home run. Another healthy act here, high fastball, swing and a miss. Yeah, 91 off the bat, you know, nothing, nothing crazy, but we know that wind can yeah. do wonders here. You know, Fosberg Obviously. here definitely looking to make a really nice pitch here. Strikeout would be ideal. Flavin a big bat for the tough jumbos. Here's Fosberg, the 0-2. Inside, strike three. Yeah, really nice pitch there. Well Fosberg executed. made a nice pitch there. Hit a good spot. Get himself a big out there. And now he'll face another big bat. Clay Saul, the DH. In case you missed it, Saul hit a moonshot onto the field hockey field, as it appeared who's currently holding practice, so hopefully no one got hit <laughs> by that. <laughs> and the two outs here and Evans on base, he'll look to make some noise. Pitch. Good looking pitch there. Fosberg really making nice pitches this inning. Hitting spots, mixing it off speed. What have you seen from him you know, recently? You know, this is his, what? Third, fourth inning of work I now. Believe, so I believe. Off speed, swing, and a miss. You know, he's good, doing a good job of just keeping the ball down. Obviously, there's been a couple of home runs, a couple of hard hit balls. But, you know, that's what happens yeah. when you face a really good, you know, yeah. hitting lineup with tough jumbos. But he's done a nice job just coming in and throwing strikes. Yeah, just about three innings of work for Fosberg. Battled. And now he's up 0 2 on Cloiso. He's the pitch. Swing and a miss. A good looking off speed there. So the Jumbos scrape two runs across, bringing the score to 11 to five. And now Johnson and Wales will have a crack at it in the top of the seventh inning. You're listening to Jumbo Cast, and we'll be back in a few moments. Welcome back as we bring you coverage of this non-conference matchup between the Johnson and Wales Wildcats and the home team Tufts Jumbos here in Medford, Massachusetts. And leading things off for the Wildcats is number 22, the leadoff hitter, Trevor Juan. 
Silas delivers. And a strike. Yeah. Nice delivery there from Reed. It's pitch number 71 for him in his outing. Yeah, pitch count's getting up there. Looking to see if there's some action in the bullpen. Not seeing anything. Pitch. This one's hit over. Fleischer gobbles it up, throws it over. Nice stretch there from Flavin. One away. Quick work there. Helps the pitch count as this game drags on into yeah. the seventh inning here. Reed has looked pretty sharp all yeah. day long today. I mean, yes. last inning he got touched up a little bit. So, you know, let's see if Johnson Wells can try to replicate that approach last inning. Now in steps Obert, who's been active at the plate today. Pitch, high ball. Obert with two hits. Looking to get on here. Reed working from the windup. In comes the pitch. Low and a ball. Not a bad looking pitch there from Reed, but good eye from the second baseman there. And he's in the driver's seat here, 2 0. Yeah, Obert definitely in a good count here. He's looking to, to find his pitch. Here's the 2 0 pitch. High. And there's a ball. Yeah, that was a nice take right there. 3 0 now for number six. Reed delivers. There's a strike. 3 1 now. Obert definitely in a good hitter's count here. Going to get something hopefully to hit. Put in play. Here's the pitch. This one's popped up. And Leonard will call off Fleischer, and there's two down. I mean, it is really Yeah, dark. that was that one was not hit too hard, and that thing, thing got out there, and it's it's dark with that wind. So. I mean, I don't know about you, Justin, but I am absolutely just kind of losing that ball once it yeah. goes above, like, kind of those back lights in I left field. I thought Fleischer would have been camped under that, but that one got halfway into left field. So wonder how these lights and these conditions will play a part here. Two outs, the pitch. Hits sharply the second baseman. McCullough gobbles that one up. Throws over the first, and he's retired. The tough Jumbos will take a crack at it and look to extend that six-run lead. You're listening to JumboCast. Welcome back to Medford. Now in the bottom of the seventh inning. Ben Leonard leading things off for the tough jumbos here. Fosberg still on the mound. He looks in. The pitch. Off speed. In there for a strike. Nice pitch there for Fosberg to lead the thing, inning off. Get yeah, ahead in the cast yeah. ball. Just outside. Good looking pitch there as well. Count is now even. Getting a little chilly out here at Saul Goodman Ballpark. Yeah, it's cold. Winds it's howling. 50 degrees. Yeah, and the pitch. Off speed inside. That's just it's classic left. New England New England yeah. baseball. One day it's 80, the next day it's 50. <laughs> it's what you get here. But nonetheless, we'll give you the 2-1 here. Pitch. Swung on, grounded to the second baseman. Obert gobbles this one up, and one away. Good job there by the pitcher. Getting the out. Leonard, of course, a, a power threat. Nothing there. Connor Brawl now steps in the catcher. Obert holding strong here. Looking to just keep this lead for the tough jumbos at six. There's Brawl in the box. Here's the pitch. Little, little fist job yeah. there, and it's 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 caught up, 
Wow, Fantastic nice play. play nice by play. Wow. Obert with another nice play today. He's made a few of those. I mean, I thought for sure that was going to get through. Yeah, not good contact. You know, no, definitely not. jammed on a cold night, but Obert makes a nice diving stop. And there's the second out. Nice. He's made a couple really good plays today. Yeah. You know, potentially this lead could be more. Six, you're in the ball game. So, great job there. Patrick Solomon now steps in the box. Shows bunt. Oh. Popped up and yeah. caught. So, three up, three down for the tough jumbos. And just like that, we move on to the top of the eighth inning. Scores 11 to five, jumbos. And we will see you after a few moments. You're listening to JumboCast. Welcome back, as we are now in the top of the eighth inning. Reed's still on the mound, here's the pitch. Fastball strike. Yeah, Silas Reed, he's going strong. I think if he has a quick inning here, we'll definitely see him back out for the ninth. Definitely. There is some action in the bullpen. Here. There is. EJ Leone in the box. And there's a strike. Leone, of course, as we mentioned. Conference player of the week. Down on two here. Reed looks in. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. And there's the first out. Strike out there for Reed. Just racking him up at this point. I believe that's his 10th of the game, if I'm not mistaken. There it is. 10 strikeouts for Silas Reed. Just over five innings of work. Yeah, but now off the bat is Riley Hassan. He's already yep. had a home run yep. and a base hit definitely off of Silas Reed. So he's definitely seen him well. Pitch. Farm fastball there, even after five innings. Oh, one count to Hassan. Pitch. Off the plate, and that one bounces to the backstop for a ball. Yeah, you can see with these turf fields, you know, these plates, they've got that, like, thick rubber kind of yes. lining around them. So when it hits the plate, it just pops right up in the air. Yeah, definitely. Now is it even count? To Hassan, who has two hits. The pitch. And there's a strike. Good looking pitch there. Now the count's 1-2. Yeah, we're definitely in the driver's seat here. We are definitely under the lights now. Definitely getting dark here. It's all going to the ballpark. And the pitch. High ball. Kind of a, you know, little change of eye level there, trying to get him to chase, but, you know, no avail. Hassan, good hitter in the box. And the pitch. Swung on, another strikeout. Low breaking ball in the dirt, swung on and missed. Another strikeout for Reed this inning. That's two up, two down. And it steps in the third baseman, Xavier Patello. What do you make of Reed today? Just impressive. I mean, he he looks sharp. A lot of first pitch strikes, getting ahead in counts, keeping hitters off balance. I, I thought his fastball command has been absolutely phenomenal today. 
And there's a breaking ball in the dirt. 1-0. Patello with a hit today and a run. Looking to get things going as this game gets late. Six run deficit for the Wildcats and the pitch. Just outside. Good looking pitch, but good eye there from the third baseman. Patello. 2 0 is the count. Reed looks in. To Prowl giving the sign, and here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. A little bit of a high fastball there. Patello look, looking to make some damage, but Reed bests him in that one. 2-1 now. Reed looks in. Long pause here. Kicks and fires. This one's grounded to Fleischer. Over to his left, makes the throw, and there's the third out of the inning. And just like that, it's the bottom of the eighth. So the score stands at 11-5. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth inning here at Saul Goodman Ballpark. Welcome back here in Medford on this blustery Tuesday evening game. First game players. under the lights, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's been, been first time ever at Tufts University. Wow, that there's a baseball game under the lights. Historic night here. Fleischer in the box for the Jumbos, and the O delivery. There's a breaking ball for a strike. Yeah, Fleischer's coming off two straight hits. Yeah, Fosberg, though, you know, standing strong here. Yeah, he's back this in game for another inning. In. Looks in for the sign. The pitch. Fastball. Fleischer lines that one to right, and there's one away. And sharp line drive yeah, to right another field. another hard hit ball. Fleischer looking pretty good today at the plate, making things happen, but that one hits Leone, and he's retired. Fleckner steps in. Hit his first collegiate home run this weekend. I know you were at the game. Yeah, I was actually on the call for that. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty exciting moment for him. I know he's super pumped up about it. First call for you and first home <laughs> run for him. So, a couple yeah, milestones. Yeah, just snuck there. a hard hit line drive in between. Pitch, low the, fastball, the ball. High part of the fence in the scoreboard. Just squeaked over. <laughs> there you go. And Fleckner steps in the box. One of the speedsters for this ball club. And there's an off speed. Swing and a miss. One and one's the count. One out, one ball, one strike. Looks in. The pitch. Ball low, breaking ball in the dirt. There's a ball. Fleckner, one for three today with two runs. Two stolen bases. So adding to his total this year. Up to 16, 17 now. Good fight there, 2-2. Two -two. Off speed, nice pitch from the pitcher. In Fosberg. Two balls, two strikes. Catcher gives the sign, kicks and fires. Grounded over the third baseman. Oh, the shortstop actually gets it and throws it. Nice play. And there's an out. Yeah, it looked like looked like Patel was going to cut that one off, but Hassan came through nicely, made the play. Nice shortstop 
play there. A little bit of a high chopper. That's, uh, that's kind of what the quarterback of the infield does, you know? Yeah. Calls people off. I know we were talking a little bit earlier about how this tough team is coming to this game only hitting 263 as a team. Yeah. But, you know, if you look at if you look at today, you know, not very many strikeouts. No. It's not a team that strikes out a Definitely lot. Not. It's a team that puts a ball strike. in play. Definitely not a lot of strikeouts today. Looks in for the pitch. Fastball swing and a miss. Yeah, four, just four strikeouts for the ball club today. So, you know, putting balls in play and, you know, makes things happen. 0-2. Ahead on the freshman second baseman here from McCullough. Pitch, off speed, hit in the air. That's carrying. Carrying, left fielder camped under it, and he makes the play. You know, we, we get excited for these five <laughs> balls, you never know where they're gonna go, but yep. Nope. Still 11 to five here. No runs here in the bottom of the eighth for the Tufts Jumbos. Johnson and Wales will try to answer in the top of the ninth here in Medford. Welcome back here in the top of the ninth inning. It's Saul Gittiman Park. Leading things off for Johnson and Wales is number eight. Silas Reed back Davis. in the mound looking yeah. to close this game out. And the pitch. Fastball in there. Ball. Good look at pitch there. Just yeah, low. I'm not sure where that one missed. Good eye though from the catcher. Obviously, you know, has a pretty good idea of the zone. Yeah, absolutely. And the 1 0 delivery from Reed. Fastball. Just misses, 2-0 now. Yeah, Dave's in a really nice count here. He's just gotta find his pitch and drive it. Gotta think maybe it takes in order, you know, down six, wanna get some base runners. We'll see, here's the pitch. Ball three, high. Oh, Davis working a couple balls here. Just trying to get on base. Cut into this six run deficit, hopefully play for a win here, here's the pitch. Strike. High fastball, but just sneaks in there. Yeah. And now the count's three to one. Davis is kind of already halfway down the line there. Yeah. And the three one delivery. Grounded over to the freshman McCullough. Snags it up, and there's an out. One away. Yeah, you can hear the Johnson Wales coach is not too happy about the, uh, the officiating behind the plate. You know, that, that's part of the game, it's going to happen. But now one away here, and in steps in, Griffin Schneider. Number 25, big righty. Reed delivers, breaking ball in the ball, in the, in the dirt. There's a ball, 1-0, one 1-0. Out. One out. Looks in from the windup. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. One. Ball, one strike, one out now. Healthy hack there from the DH. Pitch. This one's hit high. Leonard camped under it, and he makes the play. You know, could be a tough play with these lights. Yeah, it looked like he kind of just. Dark skies. Kind of second guess himself there, right? As the ball's getting yeah. to his glove. I mean, ultimately made the catch. Yeah, nonetheless. But I think you're absolutely right. I think first time playing under the lights, probably for a lot of these guys in a long time. 
on the last two away. And Sanchez Guerra looking to keep the game alive here. And the pitch. This one's hit, center field, base hit. Yeah, Guerra first pitch swing in there. He was all over that pitch. It's a good job. I mean, you know, Reed, heavy fastball. Can dial it up to near 90, so that's just a good job jumping on that one. Guerra's on with a single. Back to the top of the order here. In steps the center fielder, Trevor Juan. Got to imagine Silas Reed here just really looking to get this last out by himself. Swung on, fouled back. Oh, one's the count. Juan came into this one with a 283 batting average. Eight home runs as well. Looking yeah. to just get on base here. The Wildcats can definitely probably use one right now. Definitely, and here's the pitch. Fastball, strike. Firm, firm fastball there. And Reed looks in. Yeah, I'd imagine this is going to have Hall. a little extra juice on it. And the pitch. That one, check swing, fouled away. Good fight there. Yeah, that one also missing a car. <laughs> yeah, only one today. And no broken windshields, thankfully. <laughs> Maybe just a dent. 0-2, oh two, two outs. Johnson Wells trails by six. It's probably going to be his best pitch of his outing right here. Reed looking to close the door here. The pitch. Ball. Off speed there. Nonetheless, Juan stands strong. Reed today with four earned runs and 11 strikeouts. Looking to cap off six innings of work. And the pitch. Fastball, ball. Another one. Two, two, and two now. Juan fighting here. Yeah, he's definitely in a more comfortable position now in this at bat. Keep these Wildcats in the ball game. Give him a chance. And the pitch. Swung on and missed. Salas Reed shuts the door. Yeah, caps off a great outing. Out. And the Jumbos pick up the victory. So the Tufts University Jumbos now improve to 18 and 6 on the year. Johnson Wales will fall to 17 and 12. And just to mention that is Tufts 11th win at home. They are undefeated wow. on this home wow. field. Just impressive. Impressive stuff. And Silas Reed, big story today, along with a couple long balls from the upperclassmen. The Uni Tufts University Jumbos will play right back here tomorrow against Babson under the lights. Thank you for tuning in to JumboCast. This is Justin Prado along with Bob Jakes. And yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, have a good evening.